more interactive harmony, so I need your help, huh? So I have a quick question for you, especially for those who are 10 years and or younger. Five multiplied by two equal. What is five multiplied by two? Yes, five multiplied by two. Ten. Yes. Please give her a big applause. You are so smart. And Jesus maybe miscalculated the way he multiplied. Five multiplied by two is not equal ten. He multiplied five by two equal more than five thousand people. Maybe Jesus need to go back to the third grade, right? I used to teach the third grade to to learn multiplication table. So one time I went to this a series of talks, and one of the talks about immigration. So after the talk, one of the college students raised up her hand and said, "You know, for these past few days, I feel the sense of overwhelm. I'm just a college student. What can I do?" Notice her tone and the language. I feel overwhelmed. I'm just a college student, and what can I do? I don't know about you, but for these past few weeks, do you have that kind of sense, feeling the sense of overwhelmed, perhaps angry, perhaps feeling the sense of powerless or helpless, and feeling the sense that what can I do? Can I make a difference? You feel that way? I have many of those moments, right? I'm just an immigrant, you know, man, little man. What can I do? And can I make a difference? If you and I feel in that way or ask those kind of questions, Jesus has a message for you and me. In the gospel today, we hear that Jesus saw a large crowd, people coming to him. Imagine this large crowd, all kind of people, men, women, and children, black and white. Educated and illiterate, rich and poor, gay or straight, all kind of people gather coming to Jesus, and Jesus said to ask um, Jesus asked Philip, "Where can we buy food to feed these thousand people?" Here's my imagination. I would imagine Philip look at Jesus. You're kidding, right? <laughs> Hello. This is a lot of people, you know, two hundred wages worth of wage. There's no way we can feed these thousand of people. Hello, and Andrew said, "Well, actually, there's a little boy. Anyone? Okay, one of the little boy here. Raise up your hand, right? You have five loaves and two fish, but what good does it do? Notice both Philip and Andrew." Have the same kind of um, feeling, the sense that this is impossible. Perhaps feeling the sense of overwhelm or stuck. This is impossible, Rabbi. Hello, Jesus. In the Gospel of Mark, disciples even recommend Jesus. You know, it's getting late. Send them away. Let them go home. Remember that. And Jesus said, "No. Give me." What you have? Tell that little boy, give me the five loaves and two fish. And Jesus took it, blessed it, broke it, and distributed to everyone. And the gospel said, it's more than five thousand men. And I cannot imagine just men, right? We can imagine there must be a thousand women and children, maybe more so than than um, than men. So let's take an educated guess. Maybe ten thousand plus. Yeah, just for the sake of、um, imagination here. So this is the Jesus that have done. Precisely when we think that it's impossible, Jesus surprised us. Jesus took what we have and multiplied it. And the little boy gave what Jesus, what he had, and Jesus formed what he had to feed. Thousand people. So what can I do? Can I make a difference? What does Jesus say to you and me about the separation of the children from their family today? 
What is Jesus saying to you and me about the separation of children from their parents today? Jesus has one message for you and me. Give me what you have, and I will multiply what you have to feed 1,011.3 million people and to reunite the family. Let me share with one story to illustrate Jesus' message. Almost three years ago, September 2015, Pope Francis came to the U.S. Remember that? Pope Francis, yeah? Everyone loves Pope Francis, yes? <laughs> came to the U.S. And imagine thousands and thousands of people want to see him. And there was one scene as the Pope Mobile was driving, you know, I believe in the, kind of like a, what do you call that, um, uh, the Washington Drive, Thousand, thousand. What, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Anyway, you know Washington D.C. I, I forgot the name of the street. Anyway, as the Pope was driving, thousand people wait for a moment to see him. So security was very tight, right? We talk about hundred or thousand securities, and they put the barricade along the road to block people. As the Pope. Mobile, which is Pope Perry, but Pope Francis was driving. There's one little girl, five years old. Her name is Sophie Cruz. Five years old. Ran toward the Pope. And one security caught her, bring him back, and along with at least five or more than six security, pushed her, moving her back to where she came from, which is her parents. And suddenly, the Pope Mobile stopped. And Pope Francis waved and wanted to see her. So security brought her back to see the Pope. And the Pope kissed her, and the security took her back. And precisely at that moment, she took her T-shirt with a letter, gave it to the Pope, and the Pope took it. What did she say in the letter? And this is what she said, and I quote, Dear Pope Francis, I want to tell you that my heart is sad. And I would like to ask you to speak with the President and the Congress in legalizing my parents because every day I am scared that one day they will take them away from me. I believe I have the right to live with my parents. I have the right to be happy. I believe I have the right to live with my parents, and I have the right to be happy. And she continued, My dad works very hard in factory, galvanizing pieces of metal, and all immigrants just like my dad help feed this country. They deserve to live with dignity. They deserve to live with respect. They deserve an immigration reform." Unquote. I don't know about you, but I watched this video so many times, and every time I broke down. As a BP homily, this homily, I also actually broke down. Five years old, Sophie Cruz was born here, but her parents is actually considered as illegal immigrants. But she was born here. Five years old, met the Pope, and changed the world. Now, the Pope Francis took that letter and spoke at a Congress, the most powerful people in the world, right? The Congress is the most powerful house. And let me share with you a few lines what the Pope Francis said to the Congress. And I quote, In recent centuries, millions of people came to this land to pursue their dream of building a future in freedom. We, the people of this continent, are not fearful of foreigners because most of us were once foreigners. Because most of us were once foreigners. 
And I say this to you as a son of immigrants, knowing that so many of you are also descended from immigrants. Unquote. And Pope continued, on this continent too, thousands of persons are led to travel north, which is in America, in search for a better life for themselves and for their loved ones. In search of greater opportunity, he said, it is not what we want for our own children, unquote. It is not what we want for our own children. Now, there's two main messages that Pope Francis uh, tried to touch me here. One, all of us are immigrants or the children of immigrants. Two, it is not what we want for our own children. Now, Sophie's story did not end there. President Obama invited her to come to the White House Cinco de Mayo celebration. So President Obama invited her and her family to come and listen to his speech, and he spoke to the Congress, and this is what he said, and I quote, Together, we continue to fix our broken immigration system. The fact that we were not able to get it through Congress has been one of the most frustrating aspects of my presidency, unquote. And the story did not end there. On January 21st, 2017, Sophie Gruss, remember that's five years old, joined at the Women's March in Washington, D.C., and she gave a speech. And this is what she said, and I quote, We're here together making a change of love to protect our families. Let us fight with love, faith, and courage so that our families will not be destroyed, unquote. What can I do? Can I make a difference? Jesus would say to you and me one message. Give me what you have, and I will transform what you have to feed not only 5,000 people, but 11.3 million undocumented immigrants. And let the church say amen.